Hey everybody, I'm Andy from Pure Polish Products, all natural premium leather care out of Bend, Oregon. And I'm gonna show you the base care of a pair of old vintage Crockett and Jones two eyelet black calf derbies. We're gonna use the black cream polish, the everyday base polish, and then we're gonna use some black paste on the toes and the heels to protect. So this is just gonna be a base routine care shine before the next few steps of building up to a mirror shine, which I'll show you later. So the first step, what we have here is just a, a basic regular older pair and we need to clean them off first. So we're gonna make sure that it doesn't have any dust and grime from sitting around in the box or in your closet. So I've got a large horsehair brush just using it to just make sure that there's no specks of dirt, grime, hair, anything that would get trapped underneath the wax, get pushed into the pores. Plus this helps melt down any previous waxes you may have. I did a conditioning round recently on these and so that has a little bit of beeswax in it. This helps loosen and warm it up and also prepare the pores to accept the oils that I'm about to give it with the cream polish. Now the point of cream polish is to protect, to add color back to scuffed areas, to uh, add a little bit of conditioning oil, and then also to add a bit of a shine. So due to that, it's got a mixture of waxes, both hard and soft waxes. It's got coloring, either pigment or dye. Ours uses all natural earth pigment. And then it's got the conditioning oils and the solvents for spreading it. This is an older jar, I've used quite a bit in here, but it's, it's pretty soft. You can just press your finger and get a little bit on it. Now grain has some direction, the leather grain, so I like to put it in circularly when I'm first just adding it to the leather. That helps ensure that it gets into the pores. You know, leather is skin, so you wanna make sure it gets rubbed in. You don't want anything on top. That anything left on top, the oils or the waxes get sticky attracts dirt, and then also pulls things into the polish. A big popular change that's been happening over the last uh, decade is the increase in usage of just fingers for applying the products. Now our products are all natural, non-toxic, so I don't have to worry about what goes into my skin. Uh, there's no petroleum distillates, there's no naphtha, there's no dyes, um, there's no silicones, nothing I have to worry about absorbing. And this also lets me put it on in very thin layers and let, let me feel how it's going into the pores of the leather. So I'm not just caking it on with a cloth. These cloths at later stages more for ensuring the smoothness of the shine. But while I'm putting it in and making sure it gets rubbed in, I like to use my fingertips, especially when it's got a nice smooth toe, smooth surface here. As you can see, I'm rubbing both with the grain and against the grain. That's just helping make sure it gets rubbed into the pores. Again, same process. Start with some circular application. Just dabbing the fingertip just a little bit. If I grab too much, uh, you can layer wax on wax on wax. And, and you know, that's, that's not gonna do your leather any good. Um, you know, you wanna use the pigment for restoring the color. The oils are gonna condition and protect it or the waxes are going to protect it. The oils are going to help condition so that the leather doesn't crack at the end of the year and then you have to replace it and get a new pair of shoes. Now the first step to after you've got this here, some people like to buff immediately, some people like to let it sit for a little bit. I like to take a short horsehair brush or a boar's hair brush which tends to be a little bit stiffer than the horsehair cleaning buffing brush. This will help push it into the pores and make sure that um, the wax has an even spread across it. So I will take a shorter brush, and again, I've got dark for dark and light for light, and I just do a once over. And this gets those areas right along the welt that your fingers can't necessarily reach super well. We'll brush it both again with and across the grain. I'm not going for a buffing for the, for the final shine or anything here. I'm just going for making sure that the polish is evenly spread across the leather. I only let it sit for maybe, I don't know, one minute, 30 seconds before I jumped into it. 
uh, if you're putting it on very thin, you don't have to wait for the solvents to evaporate too much or anything. Orange oil, which is what we use for our solvent, evaporates very quickly, 3.2 times faster than turpentine. So the advantage to that is you can put it on very thin amounts and get an amazing effect. The disadvantage is that uh, some people are very used to the very slippery glide of turpentine and naphtha, but that's due to the turpentine staying around for a while, but you have to wait for it to evaporate. So ours has a little bit of a nuanced feel to it by pressing very lightly using very thin amounts, and then you get the effect much more quickly. So I just brushed it to make sure that the polish gets absorbed by the leather. Now what I'm gonna do so I'm going to take a cloth. I've got this muslin cloth. It's not super stretchy. I think when you have too stretchy of cloth, it uh, tends to clump up and grab a little bit too much. I'm not aiming for that here. I'm just going to go across the shoe and pick up anything excess that's left on top because I want it to be essentially dry. I don't want there to be excess as I go to the next few layers. This is really just kind of picking, picking up anything that's left behind. As you can see, I'm just going very quickly, just trying to get anything excess off of the top. Not trying to do any sort of crazy shine or buffing or anything with this. This is really just picking up polish at this point. Now, as you can see, I've uh, picked up some polish, but it's not like caked on. It's not thick. There's just um, some specks. You know, you can see the the black, the gray. So I did pick some up, that's good. So it's getting it off of the surface, but it's not coming up in smears. I'm not getting any, uh, anything thick or wet, which is good because then I didn't use too much. If you're getting anything thick, wet, or clumpy, uh, keep going, keep taking it off because you don't want anything sitting on the top. You won't get a nice shine if you do. Sometimes if I'm feeling that it's a little too sticky, uh, what I can do is, and this is like maybe if it's too early after a conditioning round, let's say that the conditioner is still remaining a little bit too much, it's got a little bit of a tacky surface, I will take a spray of water and then spray that on this cloth as I'm wiping it down because the water will interact with the oils and reduce the stickiness and allow you to pull more off. Okay, so again, a little bit more came off on that one, but nothing sticky or clumpy or wet. So that got the excess cream polish off. I take the large horsehair brush and now I'm brushing more for shine. Okay, so there's a base round of adding cream polish, routine care. That's enough for most. It adds protection, it adds pigment, and it's got a nice little shine to it. You do this every week, take care of your shoes, they will last a long time. So that would be step one in the process of a routine shine.